Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. I have been loving melodic techno lately, the likes of Steven Budson, Jeremy Olander, Oliver Winters, and Frost. There's a ton of guys doing this really, really cool mix of minimal and progressive melodies lately. Um, one of the more popular sounds that they use is this really, really cool Moog-esque plucky arp sound, but it's also got this long decay time almost like a detune sound with a little bit of amplitude modulation. We're gonna be covering that in Serum today and we're gonna be learning how to make it. This sound is very similar to the one used in Steven Boatson's Pan Pot remix Sleepless. Really, really awesome song that you guys should definitely check out in the description below. But without any further ado, let's hop into Serum and get to some sound designing. Awesome guys, so as you can see we are in Ableton Live today, but you don't have to be in Ableton to follow this tutorial. All you're going to need to do is load in Serum by Xfer on whatever DAW of your choice. So we're going to load that in today. Today's video we're going to be creating that Mogi kind of lead, super low and minimal, that is used in a lot of Steven Bodzin, Jeremy Olander, uh, Oliver Winters style melodic techno which is in my opinion one of the coolest genres right now kind of mixing that techno but with the progressive vibes so we're gonna be recreating uh, that style of synth today to start things off we're gonna go with the initial preset um, let's just play it as it as it is right now so what we're gonna do is drop this an octave then we're gonna add a second oscillator we're gonna select a more analog wavetable. Um, let's go along with the analog tab here and then we're going to go to subby saw. That should sound pretty cool. We're going to drop this down an octave. Let's actually drop these down two octaves instead. Then I'm going to actually fine tune this up just a tad. Kind of want that phasery sound to come in. Sounds more analog because of the imperfection there in the um, harmony. So we're going to add the sub. Let's make this negative three and then we'll set this to a square wave. So now we're getting into that mogi kind of detuned sound. What we're going to do is add a filter. We're going to do A, B, and sub. So it's effectively controlling what is coming out of this, this, and this. A, B, and sub as you see here. And then we enable the filter. And we can sweep all three of those sounds. If we disable these, it's only sweeping A, A, B, A, B sub. We're going to sweep all three. The resonance is fine where it is. I like that little minuscule curve there. Um, but the key of this sound is that really cool, uh, almost plucky vibe to it. So we're going to go to envelope two. The reason we don't use envelope one is because it defaults to control amplitude of the entire synth. We're going to use envelope two. We're going to apply it to the cutoff filter here. Turn it down so that the lowest point is maybe around this section here. The reason why we do that is so that we, we end up with that kind of low sine wavy sound. Let's try to find and, and dial in where we want this sound to end once it hits its peak. That's kind of cool right there maybe right where that blue dial is, and then we'll dial this up to maybe here. So it hits the top. Then we're gonna want to shape this down so that it hits the top point right here, then dials right back down. In order to do that, as you can see, this is the top. We want it to fade down, so we're gonna bring this on down to the bottom here. So as you can see, as that little notch moves, you can see it do it here as well. So it's now moving here. So we're hitting the top and then fading down to where we set it and dialed it in before. Then we're going to assign the attack time a little bit so it fades from the bottom up to the top and then back down like that. Kind of getting into that tunnel vision sound that's used in the Don Diablo uh, remix of Zonderling. I'm sure you guys know that song if you are into house music at all. Cool. Um, that's the basis of it. What we're going to do is apply an LFO to the amplitude of oscillator B, A, and sub. So we're going to drag envelope 1 and make it a very small amount, maybe like 10 um, on these here. What we want this to do is kind of create a vibrato effect without adjusting the pitch at all. So this is going to turn the, the, the oscillator up and down based on whatever shape we put here. So let's play this. You can kind of hear it wavering, but what I want it to do is be more of a sine wave. We're going to go to this folder here. We're going to go sine. Now, the reason why we do this is because we want the beginning of this wave here 
to end where the end is. If we did that saw wave that we had before, um, I believe it was this one, or whatever it was, um, it doesn't end where the first point begins. We want this to kind of loop, and this is what that sine wave allows us to do. And it's very, very fluid because of those gentle curves. Let's turn this up to 16, uh, 16th notes. Kind of adds a very subtle vibrato. Let's turn these up just a tad, maybe to 15. Might be too much, but we'll see. Just a bit, a bit too much, maybe 13 would be better. 12. And then we're gonna do a rise on this. So basically what this is gonna do is this right currently is going to activate as soon as we hit the key, as you can see here. It's moving. But if we enable rise, it allows us to delay when the LFO starts to work. So let's set this to a quarter note. So as you can hear, the beginning of the note is a solid hit, and then the end of the note starts to do that wavering off. We're going to maybe set this to a half note, actually. So it kind of fades into that, that um, motion. Let's turn this cutoff filter up just a tad by clicking on the envelope 2 and then turning this up. Then let's set the voicing to mono. We don't want this to be polyphonic. So the difference between polyphonic and mono is monophonic uses one voice. That means that it can only play one note at a time. You can't play a chord. Polyphonic allows us to play chords, um, but we want it to be mono to emulate that Moog style where you can only play one note at a time. And then to go along with this, we're going to enable portamento always. So it's always going to glide. And then we're going to turn the portamento up maybe 10 milliseconds. So what this is going to do is every time you play a note and then play a second note after, because it's in monophonic and because portamento is on, it's going to glide between the two notes like this. And we can kind of A, B notes and then turn this up or down to adjust where we want it. Cool, that's kind of cool. Kind of fades in and out of, of key right there. So then to top this off and to kind of wrap this up, because this is kind of where we would want it, um, we can add a little bit of reverb. I'm going to go ahead and add the serum reverb here, turn up the mix just a tad, turn up the high cut, because we don't want all that high information. Now, I did a video a while back on creating space in a mix. And um, the key to a good mix is contrast. When you have a lot of high end in your bass sounds or your lead sounds like this, um, it can kind of push them into the forefront. Uh, but when you apply a lot of reverb in the top end of something, it kind of clouds up that forefront space. So we're going to do a high cut to kind of make the high end of this sound very dry where the, the reverb isn't affecting it. Um, because reverb can cloud up things. Now, reverb doesn't make things bigger. It makes it wetter, and it kind of sets them into an atmosphere more. It kind of sets them into the background more. So by applying this high cut, we're cutting all the mud that it would initially add to the top end, which is where that crispness is. So turn this up a little. Increase the decay time to maybe 5. Now, eventually, I'm going to do a video on calculating decay times. We'll get to that in a future episode um, to go along with your BPM. Maybe reduce that high cut just a tad to introduce a little bit more of the high end information on that reverb. And maybe reduce the mix a tad. You don't want this to be too wet, but you don't want it to be super dry either. Then add some delay. This is more of that Steven Boatson sound. We only want to affect the mid-range frequencies, and then we'll do, do a ping-pong delay. Quarter notes are fine on either side. And then let me actually set a scale on my Ableton Push here and then give you kind of like a melodic demo here. Let me set it to minor. I'll do A.
Yay! Happy sound. And that kind of concludes this tutorial. Um, that's basically the sound we're going for. If you wanted to make it a little bit longer or more plucky, you can adjust this envelope too here. If you don't want it to be quite so deep, maybe you take the sub up to negative two instead of negative three. And then maybe turn the fine detune up a little bit on that second one. You don't want to take that too far and make it too inharmonic because that kind of ruins the tone as well. So that is a melodic techno lead similar to Stephen Boatson um, in Serum. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys want to download this preset, you can in the link below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something on how to make these kind of sounds. I hope you learned something about Serum. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments below. And make sure to suggest future videos down there as well. I always take... Uh, suggestions into account when planning my videos out so make sure to subscribe and make a video twice a week and i am julian i will talk to you guys in the next one hope you enjoy this preset